guys sound great? Are you glad God woke you up this morning? Amen. Isn't it good? It's good to be on this side of the grave. I don't know if some of you even happy to be alive the way it sounds. I'm happy to be here. And uh, Charisma, great job with dancing to the Lord. And praise team, great job with uh, singing to the Lord. And church, great job in praising the Lord this morning. And uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here today. And I'm so thankful uh, in this day and time, to be, be called a Christian. You know, we take, we take that for granted. We take it lightly when someone says, are you a Christian? There's a lot of people say, I'm a Christian, but very few are following. Very few are following. And so today, um, uh, last week, I preached a sermon titled, Release to Increase. How many of y'all here last week? Release to Increase. And all this week, I'm going to be honest with you, I could not shake that. I could not shake that. I, I, I'm getting ready to start another series called Transformers. We're going to start that next week, and uh, I'm excited about that too because we are a transforming church. We're doing things that God has called us to do, and that's why we're seeing people transform. How many of you know when you follow God, you will win? You're going to win. We're going to win. You're going to win. And you've got to get that in your spirit, and you've got to keep following. Even, watch this, when you don't want to. You've got to be big enough to sit there and say, there's sometimes... Man, I just get up on the wrong side of the bed. And there's sometimes you got to get back in the bed, keep rolling until you get up on the right side of the bed. You know what I'm saying? Make yourself go back to bed and roll out on the other side, whatever you got to do. So today I want to preach the final sermon, I think, <laughs> the final sermon in this series that we have been calling God's Delight. This is part five, and you can go on the website. we got podcasts. It's, uh, we're on the radio now, and we're just getting a lot of hits on the radio. And I want to thank 99.9 for, for airing this uh, on the radio. We're getting approximately 40,000 hits on the radio. It's good. And uh, so if you're listening in today, we want to thank God for you too. But I, I kept hearing the Lord say, listen to me now. You got, uh, if you don't get anything out of the sermon, write this down. I really felt in my spirit the Lord say to me to share with you that this is the year of the Lord's release. Now listen to me, this is the year of the Lord's release. Now, I want to make it personal. This is going to get sticky, because if you don't believe it, it ain't going to work. You've got to believe this stuff. You've got to write in there, this is my year of release. This is my year, this is my time. This is my appointed time that God is going to release me. And you've got to get this word deep down in your spirit. This is your year. Hallelujah. This is my time. This is my release. And this is what the Lord said. I don't understand it, but I believe it because this is what God said. You've got to quit listening to the media. You've got to quit getting off. You've got to get off the news channel. I know the news gives a bad report, but hallelujah, I've read the good news. And the good news says this is the year of the Lord's release. This is what God said is going to be It's going to happen. It's going to happen, but you've got to believe it. You say, well, Brian, I'm, I'm thankful, and I'm glad that worked for you. All right, go ahead and stay like you are then. But I'm sitting and telling you today, I really believe in my heart and in my spirit and all that I am, not because to make you clap or to make you feel good, I believe what I preach. And if you believe what you read and you say, Brian, this is the Bible, this is the Word of God, this is what God says, I don't understand it, but this is written in red, and it's God's Word, and I believe it, and I'm going to stand on it. No matter what the media says, no matter what the doctors say, I know what God said. I know what the Lord said. So hallelujah. Well, how many of you know when God's in it, you can't stop it? That's why this church cannot be stopped. Because God is in this church. It's not the pastor, it's not the praise, it's because Jesus is in this house. And I promise you, listen to me, if we keep lifting him up in the good times, and in the bad times, in the valley times, in the noon time, in the daytime, at night time, when it don't look good, but you keep giving him praise, he'll honor his word, and he'll draw people unto himself. How many of you know that's truth in this house? Give God a praise like you mean it then. It's word. It's God's word. And it's going to stand. 
I want, to, I want to give you some scripture to get down in your spirit. And I just want you to listen just for a minute. Just give God your ears. And I want this to get down in your go-go spirit. Amen. I want this to get in you. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says, In all you do, you will prosper. I love this. Psalms 24 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. And all who dwell in it shall prosper. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12 says, I declare, says the Lord, I will restore to you a double portion what the enemy has stolen from you. Hey, I feel it this morning. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 says, God shall give you increase. Yeah, Proverbs 13, 22 says, the wealth, listen to this, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked, Johnny, is stored up for the righteous. I didn't write this. Don't y'all be looking hate her eyes. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, give and it shall be given to you. I like this, hallelujah. He says, I will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10 says, I will increase the harvest of the righteous. I will give you increase, says the Lord. I will prosper you, says the Lord. If God's for you and the devil's coming against you, he says, whatever the devil has stolen from you, I'll give you double. Hallelujah. I'll give you double what the enemy has stolen from you. I feel that. How many of y'all feel the whole Lord this morning? If the word's going forward and you're already getting it. Listen to this. The word prosper and the word prosperity is mentioned over 125 times. Over 125 times in the Bible. Now listen. The Bible, listen to this. Psalms 119 verse 89. Psalms 119 verse 89 says, O Lord, listen to this. Thy word, thy Bible, thy word is settled in heaven. Now I want you all to listen to this preacher. That means this word in the Hebrew. That this word is established. It's settled. You can't change it. You can't add to it. You can't take away. That when everything's all said and gone, this word is settled in my spirit. It's in my heart. It's in this church. It's in my bones. It's in my mind. I can't get over it. You can't get over it. And under it, the word is settled. That means this, brother, that whatever this word says is settled and it's established in heaven. You can't change it. So what I'm trying to tell you and convince you of today is that God is for you. What I'm trying to convince people who are beat down and busted and disgusted, my God, we got a God that loves you. He's going to bless you. He's on time every time. He wants to bless you today, amen? But you got to receive it. you got to receive this word today. So what I'm going to do, real briefly, because we're going we're to do a couple things that God laid on my heart. Deuteronomy chapter 15. I read this last week, but I cannot get away from it. I, I, I tell you, I tried all week. I said, Lord, I'm ready to go to another sermon. And God said, I'm glad you are. I'm not. And so this word, I really believe. Now listen to me. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, before I even break this bread, you've got to receive it. You know what? They, they always say this, you can't make a horse drink water. If, if, if you put some uh, salt on them oats, it will. So what I'm trying to tell you is that God, if you're hungry for the word, you'll drink. You'll get hungry and you'll get thirsty for the word. Now listen, you can sit there and you can look at me and say, Brian, I don't know. You're going to sit there like that all your life. Listen to break that curse. Break that curse. Get it out of your mind that God's right and you're wrong and God's going to win. And we're going to win too because we're following him. So before I preach this, I'm going to put some salt in the oats today. I'm going to put some fire of the Holy Ghost in this house today. I'm telling you, there's a word burning in my soul so bad for me and you. I want you to win. Listen, if I'm just your pastor <laughs> and I'm just a preacher of the word and a messenger of God and I want you to win, how much more does God love you? How much more does God want you to win? God don't want his church to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Get that old poverty mentality out of your mind. Granny was busted and Mama was busted and I'm going to be busted. Yeah, with that mentality, you will. 
I'm sitting telling you today, I'm, I can do all things. And people say, man, Brian, that's awful cocky. Call it what you want. I believe the Bible. You just got to believe the Bible. So watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 15. If you're there, say amen. amen. The title of this sermon is No End to Your Increase. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's no end amen. to your increase. Amen. Say it like you mean it. No end amen. to your increase. Amen. I'm going to say it again. No end amen. to your increase. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Oh, I got a bunch of Bible believers in here today. It's going to be on today. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Verse 1 says this word down to verse 4. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make, hallelujah, I feel it, a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth ought to. And to his neighbor shall release it. Now, this was talking about money. But we're going to be talking about some other stuff here in just a moment. He shall not exact of it of his neighbor or of his brother. Because it is called, it is called the Lord's. Not Elkhorn. Not Brother Brian. This is the Lord's. The Lord's. Listen to this. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again. And that which is thine, and with thine brother, thine hand shall release. How many times has God has got to say the word release before we get it? Look here in verse 4. I love this. Save when there shall be no poor among you. Now, I didn't write this book. I just like this look. I, I book. I love it. He said There's, there should not be no poor among you. Listen to me. I'm going to make a statement. God just gave this to me, and I'm going to tell you. If the church would do what God told it to do, there would be no poor among us. That's the honest to God's truth. If the church would do what God has established the church to do, we, there would not be no need for welfare in this community and in this world. That's the truth. If the church would rise up, and do what God has called it to do, called her to do. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, the reason why the churches are missing it is because the churches are reading it, but they're not following his command. Hallelujah. He says these words. I love this. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee. I receive this. In the land which thy Lord thy God giveth thee, and for the inheritance to possess it. There is an inheritance. Waiting for me today. I know I can't see, Mitchell, everything that waits for me. I know in the spiritual realm, I can't see everything that is out there. But I'm telling you under the day, under the unction of God, if you follow his command, there is a spiritual inheritance waiting for you and I. It's waiting for you and I. It's waiting for you and I. Hallelujah. It's waiting. God says, go possess it. Go get it. Do whatever you got to do. I'm trying to preach. Hang on. Now I want you to turn over to Exodus chapter 21. I'm going to show you a powerful, powerful, powerful scripture. We're going to read a little bit today, but I've got to give this to you, man. It's burning in my spirit. Just thank you all for being here. Good gracious. Don't miss churches. I'm telling you, if you miss one service... You're going to feel like you missed it all. That's what the anointing of God will do. Exodus chapter 21, if you're there, say amen. amen. Now, we're going to be reading now the NIV. Exodus chapter 21, verse 1 says this is where we're going to read down to verse 5. And please make a note of this. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, this is a scripture reference. Go back to Exodus chapter 21. It says, these are the laws you are to set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, we were talking about a servant. They bought a, a servant, and they lasted for six years, possibly up to seven. Listen to this. He is to serve you for how many years? It's a scripture reference. But, I love but in this. Uh, but in the seventh, what? He shall what? Without paying. Now come on, hang with me now. Look at verse 3. If he comes alone. He is to go free alone. But if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. 
I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel a shifting. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her child shall belong to her master and only the man shall go free. But watch this. You know why? Because look here at verse 5. But if the servant declares, I love my master and I, my wife and my children and do not want to go. He said these words. I love being in slavery so much. I don't want to go free. Now think about how powerful this, this word is here today. Listen to me. This is very important that you hear me this morning. If you keep reading on down here in Exodus chapter 21, the slave was only free if he wanted to be free. Listen to me. The slave was only free after the sixth year when God says, I release you. Go. You don't have to be a slave no more. You don't have to be in bondage no more. Go. And this man was in bondage for so long. So long, Greg. He sat there and said, I know there's manna out there. I know there's an inheritance out there. I've read the Bible. I know God declares the Lord because I am the seed of Abraham. And he gave Abraham the seeds of the land. But this slave was in slavery for so long. In bondage for so long. Y'all hear me say amen, preacher. I got you. He said, no, I don't want to go free. I would rather, much rather stay where I'm at and reap the repercussions where I'm at than to ever be set free. My God, I'm preaching now. There's a lot of people in traditional settings says, I know it's the Spirit of God is not in this house. I know. Oh, I'm preaching like a white man now. Hallelujah. I know that it don't look too good for me. And I know that mama went here and daddy went here. But I'm telling you, declares the Lord, I've got to be where God's at. You've got to break the tradition. You've got to break what you think. And God will set you free. There's a lot of marriages. It's just going forever. I'm going to act the way I want to act. And I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to sing what I want to sing. I'm going to go where I want to go. And you, you love bondage. You say, no, I don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You love it because why? You've got the opportunity right now, right now, under this teaching, to break the curse. You've got a chance and an opportunity right now to make your mind up and say, you know what, Brian? I know that the slavery, I know what it looks like. And I know what my marriage is like. But I'm sitting here telling you today is this and this. It's like the children of Israel. They circled the same mountain for 40 years. How many churches, how many marriages, how many people do you know today, Brother Glenn, that are circling the same insanity mountain, doing the same old stuff, but it's just not working? You know why? Because you're in bondage. You're, whether you like this sermon or not, the, the, the Bible says, God says, I have released you. Go, youth group. Go, youth group. Make a difference in your school. Make a difference wherever you're at. No, they won't like me. Go. God has released you. Adults. We say, well, I don't know about this younger generation. They hoop and they holler. And this, that, and the other. Well, at least, at least they hooping and at least they hollering. At least they clapping. At least they worshiping. At least they up front. At least they doing something for the Lord. I declare today a release in your life. Quit staying in slavery. Quit being in bondage. Quit doing it. Quit, quit circling the same mountain. That bugs me more than anything in this world, Jimmy. I'll go to church and say they want to break through them. When they start getting to break through, they go back to tradition. Oh, blessed be the name. I want this, and I want that, and I'll do this. And God gives you an opportunity, and the next thing you know, they go right back to the slave position. Woo! Everybody say, preach that, preacher. Everybody say, come on, Rev, preach that. Yeah, it's the truth. You know I know God's in the house? Because I know this word will go forward, and God said it will not come back. That means this quit circling the same mountain year after year after year. At some point in your life, you got to look up and say, did we pass this before? Did we not go around the square in Columbia 15 times? Halfway around goes to, Bur to Berksville. Three quarters of the way around goes to Parkway. If you take a right, it goes to Bowling Green on the Parkway. It does not go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I found that out. 
on my honeymoon. My honeymoon. I had the husband position, driver of the car. Got there, didn't need, didn't need no map. Didn't need no instruction. Yeah, this is the truth. And here's the deal, man. We was going toward Bowling Green. Thought we was going toward Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Y'all was laughing because y'all be done that too. And I'm not lying, we drove, and it was snowing, February the 3rd, 1995, and it was snowing. And Dana was sitting over, I just quiet as a mouse. But all of a sudden, my wife rose up. She said, honey, we've been driving a long time, and I've not seen no signs. And I said, honey, just be still. I said, I know what I'm doing. It's the truth. Man, we got the Bowling Green, and I, I said, get that map out, honey. She got the map out, just thought it was God's truth. Got the map out, and I, here I was. And about two inches was Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And I said, well, two inches on the map's not too far. <laughs> That's hundreds of miles. <laughs> and I felt for once in a while, I said, my goodness, you hard-headed, highlighted, 200-pound, hard-headed man. Sometimes you got to turn the car around on the interstate. Sometimes you got to just turn your life around and say, I messed up. I'm not going down the wrong road. I'm not going the wrong direction. I'm turning it around for King Jesus. Amen. I'm turning it around. I declare today it's a turnaround season for me and you. I declare today an unction under God. Turn around. Change. Come out of tradition. Get in the Word of God, and God will set you free. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Brian, you're preaching good this morning. Well, thank you. Hallelujah. How many of you have been going around a mountain? Change! Change! Brian, I can't help it. I can't turn it around. Then my friends will leave me. They'll leave you anyhow. You got a friend called Jesus that sticks closer than a brother. You got a man called God that you call Abba Daddy. You got a God that loves you in you, around you. Hallelujah. Woo! Lord, set my coattail on fire. Hallelujah. See, here's the deal. Our lives will get into a pattern. That's what the Lord told me. We you get into a pattern. And we think that pattern that we set in our life, Dana, we think it's good because we don't have problems. Listen to me. Just because you don't have a problem don't mean you're going the right direction. Watch this. I'm going to show you all interesting scripture. So I bet you've never read this in the Bible. Look in Exodus chapter 21. Look here. Is that back up there? Exodus chapter 21, put that back up. Y'all, this is going to blow y'all's mind. <laughs> Look, go back to, go back to verse, uh, go back to verse 3. We're going to read on, listen to me. No, go to verse 5. Okay, look. But if the servant declares, I love my master and I love my wife and his children... And do not want to go free. He says these words, I do not want to go free. He said, I do not want to go free. Here in, here in Exodus 21, if you read further on down, there was an interesting mark that a slave would have in his life. You know what they would do? If that person, Daniel, decided, listen to me, to remain a slave, remain a permanent slave, you know what they would do? They would, they would put a hole in his ear. We call it today pierces the ear. And they would put an earring in that person's ear. Now, I know that makes all the men go, whoa. They would put an earring to mark that slave saying that that slave is mine. And I started thinking, what did, what, how are we marked? How are we marked? How would people look at your life? What do they see? What does the mark, Heather, on your life? They, when people look at Heather Barnes, they said, they go, you know what? Heather is a Christian because of this. Sort of thinking about what are some indications, what are some marks 
I don't have my ears pierced. I'm not a slave to the master. But here's what the Bible says. If I am under the authority and under the blood of the most high master, King Jesus, I should have a mark in my life. I am marked by Jesus. Here's how I am marked. I believe by my faith and by my actions. By my faith and by my actions. By my faith and by my actions. That when people look at me, they can sit there and go, you know what? Here, here's what blows my mind. Here's what blow, here's what the devil, how the devil tries to stomp me. There'll be a, a situation that will rise in the church, and I know what God says. That where two or three come together touching and agreeing, that in my name I will be there. You have not because you ask not, James 4, 3. I know the scripture. I read it in Mark chapter 11. says these words, I love the Lord. He says, stay under that mountain, be ye removed, and you will be cast into the sea. I know what it says. Lay your hands upon the sick, and they shall arise. I know what it says. And then all of a sudden, you'll have a death situation arise in your life. And all of a sudden, your prayers are not answered the way that you think they are to be answered. I dropped by to tell you today, we look at death the wrong way. Scott, I dedicate this over to you right now. You and Nadine and Tina and your mama, we look at death the wrong way. Death, according to the Bible, is a precious thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's when God gathers his children together. If we knew, if we only knew right now what heaven was really like, I promise you, the saint, the God, and man or woman in you would long, would hunger, would thirst, would desire to be there. When somebody dies, the Bible says you should rejoice. Now, I know it's hard. I miss my daddy. I miss my papa. I miss my granny because it's in the flesh. My desire is that they would stay forever here. But God knows. I, I was in the hospital with Scott's dad. And man, I was sitting there. That's what the word God he gave me, Scott. He said, You're looking at it wrong. This is one way I defeated death. Because death can't have you. I took you, and now you're not sick. Listen to me. I'm trying to give you encouragement in this house. The mark of my life should be faith and works. In other words, faith without works is dead. If you call yourself a Christian and you've been sitting on a blue chair for 50 years of your life and you've done nothing for the Lord, shame on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've got a God that burns in me. Now, I know not everybody's ADHD and PhDs and STDs and all, all that stuff. Not STDs. I didn't say that. <laughs> I know y'all are just going, ah! That just goes to show you how the fleshly ears turn into negative things. Here's what I'm trying to tell you guys is this. Okay, STD. Let's, I'll get y'all back. A saint transformed and delivered yeah i've got stds whatever now watch this building the radio they're going, oh did you hear about brother brian yeah he's he's a saint he's been transformed and he's been delivered that's right so y'all bring it on yeah because you know what god will always come back to lift you up and to bring you up and to always be there for you god ain't gonna tear you down man of god I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel good. Wang on, wang on. Here's the deal. Faith needs to arise in this house. Faith needs to arise in this house. You say, Brian, we're doing good. I'm talking about excellent. Excellent. I want to be able a year from now to come to you and say, man, how you doing? And you say, man, do you got an hour for me to tell you how blessed I am? Do you have just a moment to tell? Let me tell you what God has done for me. So, so often, what we do, we look at us, and you miss your promise, you miss your blessing. What happens was this. Those people who had the piercing in their ears was bought by slavery. Could you imagine, Scott? All their life, they look at the promise. All their life, Miss Carolyn, they look around and say, man, I could have had that. That's my promise. But see, here's what happens. If you don't accept it and receive it, you'll fumble it, and your opposite team will get it, and they'll run down the field, and they'll go like that, touchdown. 
So you've got to come in. There's got a point in your life. Whether you believe this word or not, you got to say, you know what? He preached the word. It's in the Bible. I don't understand it, but I'll accept it. That's what the churches are missing. That's, that's what the churches are missing. And, and I know how some of you, I hear it all the time. Well, preacher, I, I praise the Lord for you. I praise God things are working out for you. I praise the Lord that, that you believe that, but, but, always got to be a but. Always got to be somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a but. Hey, it could get worse. It's the truth. Tom said, I got hit. <laughs> Always got to be a but. Always got to be somebody say, I know what the Bible says. But. I know it's good for you. But. Okay, okay. God, I, I was sitting in my, my house the other night. If you want to believe like that, that's okay, that's okay. But would you please do me a favor? Would you hand me over your shades? Because my future's so bright. I got to wear shades. My future is so bright, I got to wear shades. My God is so big, I got to wear shades. My God is on time every time, I got to wear shades. His glory is so bright, I got to wear Anybody want a pair? They're no good till you put them on. You say, I see people now driving down the highway. Lord, I thank you for the sun, but God, it's blinding me. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for the, for the nice day, the beautiful weather, God. Oh, Jesus, if I lived in Florida, and then you're in Florida, and all of a sudden, whoo, my God. Whoo, my Lord. It sure is hot. Lord, would you let it rain? And God lets it rain three and a half years. Whoo, Lord, that's enough. Y'all know I'm telling truth. You know I'm telling truth. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be, Lord, I thank you for the sun, but God, could you put it on the west? No good and well, don't, don't do that. It's the truth. Then we come to church. We come to church. It's too loud. These chairs need to be cleaned. The reason why is because you're sitting in it. Let me get back. So here is, this is the truth. You know, I, I know the devil tells me, Brian, somebody's mad. Somebody's going to be mad at you. It is the truth. Isn't it sad that a preacher's got to get in front of 500 and some folks and sit here and say, man, let's just have church. Let's just worship God. Why well, we got a chance to worship the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm through, but watch this. Habakkuk chapter 2. You've got to turn there. You've got to turn there. Habakkuk chapter 2. It's in there. Old Testament. Close, close to Malachi. Go to Malachi and go back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Close to, the, close to the Old Testament there. Now, Aaron, I want you to put that up there. This is so powerful. This is what God gave me to tell you. And I dedicate this next part of this sermon to every person in this, in this house today, right now. When I thought, when the Lord gave this to me, here's what I really believe the Lord told me. Habakkuk chapter 2, we're going to go to verse 2 and verse 3. Y'all there say amen. If not, it's on the big Bible, all right? Listen to this. And the Lord answered. So listen, the Lord talks, but are you listening? The Lord speaks. He's still got a voice. Are you listening? And God still speaks. I'll stand on it to the day I die. And the Lord answered. Who did he answer? He answered him. He answered. I'm going to ask you all again. Have you all heard the voice of the Lord yet? Huh? He let me say, Brian, no, I've not heard the voice of the Lord. How come? 
Well, you got to live a good, stable life, and you got to be perfect, you got to be complete. Tell that to Saul in Acts chapter 9 when he was on the Damascus Road when he was going to get a decree to kill Christians. He was lost. He was lost and on his way to kill Christians. And he heard the voice of the Lord. He said, oh, Saul, oh, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Christians, we're not lost. Hey, Wood Reiner, you should be able to hear the voice of God. I didn't say that. The Bible said it. And here's what we'll do. We'll debate that. We'll, we'll have a business meeting. Well, I don't know if God still speaks. He don't to you because you ain't gave him your ears. I don't know if God still heals. You'll never be healed because you don't believe it. Preach. Huh. Write. Everybody say, write the vision. And make it. Listen to me. Some of you right now, this is a word from the Lord. You need to write your dream. You need to write your vision on a piece of paper and make it plain. God this is what I desire. This is my need. Not my greed, but my need. And Lord, I'm plainly writing it down right now. Y'all listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I promise under the unction of God. I'm not just telling you this to get a hand clap or to make you feel good. I really believe this is the year of the Lord's release. I really believe right now some of you are sitting there and you're so stubborn. You're so prideful. You're still debating. Will God do it? Will God do it? I'm just sitting. Leave it up there. I'm just sitting and telling you what God said. Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets. Today I'm asking you right now. If you've got a piece of paper or if you've got a bulletin in front of you right now, get your pen out and I want you to write something. I want you to write your vision. Write what is stopping. Listen to me. Here's the good news. Write what you need to be released from. Write on a piece of paper right now what you need to be released from. Make it plain. Put it on paper. Put it on tablets. If we had tablets, I'd pass out a piece of big rock to you right now. But we don't have it. That he may. Ain't that weird that he may run? That read us it? I check this out. Check this good, Courtney. The Bible in that word run is a Hebrew word that means be joyful. When you write that on this tablet and you make it plain, the Bible says you should be joyful because of this. Come on. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for an, app an appointed time. But look, but at the end it shall speak and not. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Speak and not lie, though it tarries. Some of you right now, you're tarrying. Listen to me. Hang on. Hang on. You keep tarrying. Because why? At your appointed time. Listen. What did it say? Wait. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy this over you today. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will surely, it will not. It's not going to last forever. <laughs> Your problem's not going to last forever. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Please say amen. I don't believe it. Or Brian, shut up and I'm going home or something. Because I'm telling you the Bible, the word says this. You write that vision on a piece of paper and you make it plain. And when you make it plain, you should be joyful. Because it is for a point in time. And when my point in time comes, hallelujah, it shall come to pass. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you've been. But I declare today under the unction of God, it will come to pass. It shall not tarry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Brian. Thank you. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to do it. We're done. Praise him. You come. Here's what I want you to do. Is everybody writing? Because listen, here's the deal. You say, I don't have a piece of paper. Raise your hand if you don't have a piece of paper. We will make sure you've got some paper in here. 
If not, tear, neighbor, tear off a piece of paper. Let them, let them write this down. The first thing I want you to do, I want you to put the date on this piece of paper. You say, Brian, boy, you're awful bold about this. I can be bold about this because that's what the Bible says. God says, I did not lie. Watch this. If God lied, I feel sorry for everybody under my voice today. If every word is not true in that Bible, I feel sorry for everybody in this house today. But I declare today, I believe every word from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. My God is not a liar. He's my hero. He's my best friend. He's my God in his own time, every time. That's Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Notice he said his appointed time. So here's what God spoke into my heart to do. And this is what we're going to do. I want you to write down on that piece of paper with the date. And I want you to write what you need to be released from. Some of you may need to be released from finances. But listen to me. That means this. You may have to work a little overtime. You say, well, golly. I don't want to work. God, why do you pray then? Lord, I want to be released because I've got fear in my life. Well, you can't remain in fear and go forward. You've got to break that cycle that has a hold on you. Lord, I want to be released in my marriage. Do you have a biblical reason to be released? I'm a firm believer. Listen to me. Listen to me. you got to fight sometimes. Christians fight for what they believe in. And you got to hold on when everybody else lets go. So I, I'm, I'm just declaring what the Lord's saying to me. So you've got to write this down. Write the date. Lynn, I feel this atmosphere with worship. Come on. And when you've got that rope down, I want you to stand to your feet. This is no joke. If you don't believe it, stay down. If you don't believe God's going to answer your prayer, stay in your seat. If, if you don't believe God's going to fix your, fix your marriage, stay in your seat. If you don't believe you'll ever make it, stay in your seat. If you don't believe what I preach today, stay in your seat. If you don't believe you'll ever get healed, stay in your seat. If you don't believe what you're writing on that piece of paper, sit down. I'm being that honest with you today. Can I be honest with you? Because it's real. Everybody got it? And I've done something I've never done before in my life. I wrote my prayer down. When I, when I say this prayer, if you really want this, because here's the thing, you may be standing because everybody's around you, and you may have sin in your life. Can I tell you right now, the first thing you need to do is get that sin worked out in your life? First thing you need to do, watch this. If you messed up last night, you need to get it right today, right now. You need to get it right. Because you know what? The Bible says that sin is a blessing blocker. Sin, it separates you. It don't make you lost, but it separates you from the fellowship of God. The Bible says these words also in Mark 11, by the way, that if this side has an ought, if you have an opposition, something that's going on in your heart, Against somebody over here, the Bible says that God won't even hear your prayer. How many of you know God's no joke? This is some serious stuff right now. So before we go any farther, this altar's open. Because I'm going to pray a blessing over you that I believe God gave me to pray over you. And you're going to repeat it after me if you believe it and you want it. But if not, service over. Go home. So tired of playing church, Jordan. Either that book works, or we're all a mess. Now, I don't know where you're at in your appointed time. I don't know what season you're at right now. Some of you feel like a rubber band right now. You're getting ready to break. But can I tell you something? It's the good word. A rubber band is only good when it's stretched to the maximum. A rubber band's a rubber band, but when you start stretching, you get more in it. That's good, isn't it? So some of you need to be stretched and get more blessings. Stretch, more anointing. Stretch. If you're just a little rubber band, all you ever going to get is a little pencil. 
man, I want to be stretched. That more blessings and more anointings that can be stretched and God can put more stuff in me. So are you, are you stretchable this morning? So before we go any farther, this altar's open. And I'm going to tell you, everybody in here has got something in your life. I'm so tired of people saying, well, all y'all do is give altar calls. That's right, because we're a messed up church. We're not a perfect church. We need more of Jesus at this church. So this altar's open. Before you can ever receive, you've got to have an open heart. I know this is a tough word, but it's a true word. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, this altar is open. God, <laughs> touch your people. Touch your people. Open their hearts. Open their minds. That God, Lord, there's going to be more of a release in their life. More of an increase in their life. Bless this altar time. In Jesus' name.